of your worship, Lord, knowing that you are present. As the prophet said, when Moses went down into Egypt, he went down, he went down with him not only manifesting in signs and wonders appearing therein, but also you were seen visibly in the pillar of fire so in these last days. Yeah. We appreciate that so much, Lord, to know that we're right back to that era now where there has to be an exodus, and you are the one who has come down to get us out of here. We appreciate that so much with the shout, with the voice, and with the trumpet. May we, Lord, tonight remember what was said in that trumpet, that rather than that uh, shout, Lord, that voice that was given to us in this hour that will bring to pass what we're looking for, which is that trumpet call. May we know what is given to us, Lord, that we are supposed to have, because we know that we are to be restored back in our faith and our hearts turned back to the Father. So help us tonight to understand what has gone on and what is going on, what is yet to go on through the study of your word which was left us by the prophet. Help us yeah, in these yeah. things. We'll be careful to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Now, <coughs> we're going to Brother Branham. And this is number 19 for sure now. I'm usually out of step with the actual number. So this is number 19. On Christ the mystery of God revealed. And in this particular portion we have come to where Brother Branham is dealing with the bride, the fallen bride redeemed back to God and back to Eden. Uh, he dealt with this subject, of course, in the three phases, which was revelation, preeminence, and back to Eden. He also used the first two uh, synonymous, uh, synonymously by saying the phase of uh, revelation was God manifested in Christ. And then he mentioned where Christ would be uh, manifested in the bride receiving preeminence, whereas once God had the full dedication, attention, and the sovereignty in the life of one person called Christ, he would now have the same sovereignty in a person at the end of this age, someone so dedicated as to give Christ the preeminence. Of course, that was the prophet speaking of himself. I know it sounds pretty elevated, pretty lofty, that a man should testify so, but who is going to make a disclaimer upon that when we have studied the case? So the phase tonight, <clears throat> and I suppose for some time, is dealing with that fallen bride being restored back to Eden. And in speaking of Eden, uh, on page 62, is which we read in the, about the second major paragraph, now remember that he, Christ, is that tree of life contrary to the serpent seed. He's that seed, the woman's seed, the tree of life in the garden. And unless they put forth their hands and, remo and move this tree, they'd eat that tree and live forever. And he's the only tree that can be taken that you can live forever. His word is life. And if that be the word, then, then the word of God which Eve turned down in the garden of Eden, then here's Christ the word made manifest. And when he came on earth, he was the tree of life. Do you believe that? And Rome, what did it do? It, he had to be chopped down. He was put on a tree of disgrace, for cursed is everyone that hangeth upon a tree, and became a curse for the human race. And now through that, he brings forth a bride tree, which will be the tree of life restored back to him as husband and wife in the Garden of Eden. Oh, glory to God. <clears throat> By the same word, the same God made manifest as husband and wife. Same bride tree back again. Notice making it known. Now, my, there's so much here we could just keep on going. Notice the tree of Christ, the body in the garden, now making his mystery known to this bride tree, redeemed by Christ the second Adam. Do you believe he was? He's really the last Adam. Uh, the terminology is last Adam, second man, as far as I recall. Uh, do you believe he was? Going back home to Eden with his fallen wife redeemed, back home again. That's Christ and the church today taking his wife back. See the threefold mystery now. God manifested in Christ. Christ manifested in the church all together to bring back the original Adam and Eve again, man and woman, which are one, made out of the same blood, the same spirit, and everything else. Now remember, he typed the bride with David with 500 wives. <clears throat> it was one man, and though all the bride was, the bride was, of uh, David was typed as one, not typed as 500. They may comprise the one unity, which was a bride. <clears throat> the, the church is the blood of Christ by the Spirit, 
because the life is in the blood. That's the baptism of the Holy Ghost that baptizes us into his body, that recognizes only his body, his flesh, his word, denominations won't ever touch that. It's a revelation. She knows it. So did Eve know it, but she fell. But this one knows it and won't fall. She's ordained. She's ordained to not fall. She won't fail. She's predestinated to it. Amen. Blessed is the man whom the Lord God will not impute sin. You ministers know what I'm speaking of. A couple of dozen of you sitting here. See, blessed is the man to whom God will not impute sin. That was said by David. Notice redeeming back with him, going home, back to eternal life in a human body, eating drinking, living to forever. Now that's what you're looking at. Isaiah said they build houses and inhabit them, plant vineyards and eat the fruit. They'll not build another take it. The children will take it, but they'll be there with their offspring. He'll build it and stay there. Amen. He doesn't build and another eat. He builds and eats himself. Amen. What is it? His bride going back with him, redeemed, back to the original Adam and Eve again. Now that's back in the garden. Uh, as two innocent people, and of course they were not necessarily righteous, uh, they were innocent, and they became sinful. All right, for it's left itself behind, that sin then is left behind, see. They look back at the cross and see that death has been paid. Now by faith we are resurrected with him, sitting in heavenly places right now, that's the spiritual resurrection he spoke of. Looking back to what redeemed us, waiting for the husband to come, to march on home with him. Threefold purpose of God manifested in Adam and Eve and every prophet and down through the ages and he that is to come, he that was, he which is, and he which is to come. The whole manifestation, the revelation of the word of God, Adam and Eve going back home again redeemed, God making himself known. They will sit upon the throne of David, is that right? And rule all nations with a rod of iron. There will be a tree on each side and each nation that comes in their leaves will be, that's of the tree, will be for the healing of the nations. The king shall bring your honor into it, and there'll be nothing that can defile or anything ever enter into it. And Mount Zion will have a light on her all day and night, <clears throat> and the redeemed shall walk in that light. Oh, hallelujah. Now he's talking about redeemed back to Eden, right? Just to think it's not a mystical story, it's not some theological conception. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ by his word, which is outshining and been true or has outshone and been true in all ages, and it's true in this age. It's true here now, it's true with me, it's true with you, and every man and woman that holds this revelation, that's the shout, of course. And if you see where to ask somebody, what is the message? Many people, you know, uh, for years we sort of staggered and stumbled around, you know. <clears throat> we looked at a lot of things and said, well, this is the message and that's the message. A lot of other things were the message, what is it Brother Branham was talking about. And uh, uh, Brother Branham then told us very, very succinctly in 62, he said, my message, which my ministry, of course, which remember ministry in itself is not the thing, it's the message that makes the ministry, he said, is to declare that he is here. So what you're looking at here is the fact that <clears throat> you have... That one here, uh, getting us in a position to take us back to Eden. So everyone that holds that revelation. And see God himself making himself known and pulsating him through the life that you're a prisoner to him now. You are his love prisoner. The world can laugh, make fun, and say, uh, come on out. That's your token, see. You could go, but you're a prisoner there. And uh, the women can act Hollywood, but not you. You're a prisoner, see. Amen. See, you're a prisoner to Christ. Other men can smoke and drink and carry on if they want to and call themselves Christian deacons, even preachers, but not you. You're a prisoner. You're a prisoner to the word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Making his mystery known to his bride, to be redeemed by Christ, the second Adam, going back home to be restored back to the original Eden. Not to original Eden. Free from death, sickness, or shame, going back with, with eternal life. Then listen, so many people got the wrong conception. To convert people to Christianity and to its government is not God's thought at all. Now, <clears throat> and in here, as I mentioned last Sunday, there are four times that Brother Branham actually mentions the Garden of Eden, and several times he alludes to it. So what we did, we went into the subject a certain, uh, um, to a certain degree, and we looked up the references 
on the Garden of Eden, and though we left out a couple of them, which in my estimation were not too pertinent, we came up with the study in Genesis 2, 7 to 15, Genesis 3, 22, 24, Isaiah 51, 3, Ezekiel 28, 12, 13, Ezekiel 31, 1 to 18, Ezekiel 36, 33 to 35. There's also a couple of others. <clears throat> but let's just read these now. Beginning again in Genesis 2, 7 to 15, at least part of it. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and a man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Now notice he doesn't say in the next phrase that out of the ground came these two trees. It just simply says, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In other words, <clears throat> they are not necessarily trees. We have, some, we have the symbolic understanding here. <clears throat> so you keep that in mind, because it doesn't say that they came out of the ground. And people say, well, he said you shouldn't eat of those trees. Well, uh, you know how it is that people say, well, uh, once he had a taste of that, he didn't want anything else. A taste of gambling, a taste of this, a taste of that. The person became completely perverted into it. So these are, these, these are symbolical, although they are actually real. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. And the name of the first is Pison, that is that which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good, there is delium and onyx stone. The name of the second river is Gion, and the same is that that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. The, third, the name of the third river is Hittical, and it is that which goeth uh, toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of any thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day of eating of thine thou dost surely die. <clears throat> okay. And in Genesis 3, beginning at 22, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever, Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, he, uh, and, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. <coughs> so man did not have access to that. All right. Uh, in Isaiah 51 and 3, For the Lord shall comfort Zion, he will make he, she, he will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and, th and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Now here you find Eden is running parallel or is the same as Zion. And you know what Brother Branham said about Mount Zion and the future home of the earthly bride and the heavenly bridegroom. All right, <clears throat> 12 to 13 of the book of Ezekiel. And, of course, here we have the, sim the symbol again where uh, God is taking up a lamentation against the king of Tyrus. And you know that this goes far beyond the king. It goes right back to what motivates the king and what the king is in league with. So, therefore, listen, son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and send him. Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, the topaz, the diamond and beryl, the onyx, the jasper and sapphire, the emerald, carbuncle and gold, and the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee <clears throat> the day thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. I have set thee so. Now, Tyrus was certainly not a, an anointed cherub. You know, in the, in the uh, uh, wilderness tabernacle, they carved out the cherubim, and uh, they were over the mercy seat with their wings outstretched. They, they were part of the uh, literal presence of Almighty God. They were there in the presence of God. <clears throat> and, of course, at this time here, they constituted a part of worship. 
And you see the same things in the book of Ezekiel also, other portions. I have sent thee so, thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire, thou wast perfect, thou wast perfect in thy ways, from the day thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned, therefore I cast thee as profane out of the mount of God, and destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire, and so on. You can see here that this is relative to Satan himself, and you can see that Satan was in the Garden of Eden. <clears throat> okay, we go further to, to Ezekiel, the 31st chapter. And here again we see symbology again. We see this set forth in symbols. And it came to pass on the eleventh year in the third month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to his multitude, whom art thou like in thy greatness? Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon, with fair branches and with a shattering shroud, and of a high stature, and his top was among the thick boughs. The waters made him great. The deep set him up on high, with her rivers running round about his plants, and sent out her little rivers into all the trees of the field. Now you'll notice that this is a, 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 a place of great uh, fruition. There's a lot of fruit going to be here. There's going to be an expansion from a center. From, from the center to circumference. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his boughs were multiplied, and his branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. And of course that's dominion over people and power that they give him. And the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs, and always that signifies evil. Under his branches did the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. Thus was he fair in his greatness, and the length of his branches for his roots was by great waters. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. Now those are clues that you listen for. The fir tree were not like his boughs, the chestnut trees <coughs> were not like his branches, nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. Now you see you've got your, sim your, 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 your language of, of symbols in here. And if you haven't guessed it by now, this is Satan's Eden, <clears throat> what we're talking about. And we're seeing where his origin was and what he did to get him where he is today, why judgment come. I have made him fair by, by the multitude of his branches so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Now, uh, you're looking at that again, that's a prime curse that there is where a man wants to go to organization because that's where the crowd is, the money is everything else. You're getting into wrong philosophy, see. Therefore thus saith the Lord, because thou hast lifted up thyself in height, and he hath not and he has shot up his top among the thick boughs, and his heart is lifted up in his height. I have therefore delivered him into the hand of the mighty one of the heathen. He shall surely deal with him. I have driven him out for his wickedness. Now remember that happened to Babylon. And if you're reading correctly, you're looking at Rome here and the World Ecumenical Councils, which you're reading, Brother Branham. And there's a bomb with their name on it. Rome's going to get it and America's going to get it. Amen. Remember, those bombs will literally be with a white by the continent by the time they're finished. So if they'll be thrown up anyway, there's enough on one of those, <coughs> those uh, missiles up there. And they can have them going off in a series. And there'll be no stopping it. And strangers, the terrible and strangers, the terrible of the nations, have cut him off and have left him upon the mountains. And in all the valleys his branches are fallen, his boughs are broken by all the rivers of the land, and all the people of the earth are gone down from his shadow and are left him. Upon his ruins shall all the fowls of heaven remain, and all the beasts of the field shall be upon his branches. Now you notice that's the same phraseology used concerning Tyre, that, that you know, just, just describing the fact that there's going to be nothing left there. This is how your kingdoms rise and fall, and who is at the head of those kingdoms, and what those kingdoms are purporting to do. Always trying to outshine God and God's people. Always trying to take over and worship and be the exalted ones. To the end that none of the trees by the rivers exalt themselves for their height, neither shoot their top among the thick boughs, neither their trees stand up in their height. All that drank water, for they are all delivered unto death. He's going to leave neither root nor branch to the nether parts of the earth, in the midst of the children of men, with them that go down to the pit. Now you 
notice in there the hierarchy and the whole bunch are going to go down. And you notice it's the waters that give them authority. I guess there's one place where Brother Branham and I sort of disagree, though we don't disagree. So I always feel sorry for the people. It's not the people, it's organization. My answer has always been this. Who are the ones that are organized and give the powers to the organizers? <clears throat> you, just, you just don't look at the people and say, well, I'm going to forgive them because they're led by a bunch of bobos. There's no way. See, the, 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 the individuals are responsible. There's, there's not one that shall not bear his judgment and stand before the great white throne and give an account. There's not one. You can say, well, this person's is to be blamed because that was the leader. Who made him the leader? We've got a mafia condition in America. Read a Reader's Digest. Every place you go, we've got corruption. Who does it? Grassroots with their pork barrel. <coughs> Greed with their loopholes. It's always, it's, it don't, you can't just look at leaders. <clears throat> You've got to look at people. Because the Bible, the Bible ends up by saying, and my people like it, so they want it that way. Yeah. See? Thus saith the Lord God in the day that when he went down to the grave, I caused the mourning, I covered the deep rim, and I restrained the blood thereof. The great waters were stayed, and I caused Lebanon to mourn for him, and all the trees to feel pain for him. In other words, God just let him have their own great funeral. I made the nation to shake at the sound of his fall, when I cast him down to hell with them to descend into the pit. Now he's talking, of course, in terminology here of nation after nation, Babylon, all these nations going on down. Bring me, letting you know that the head of the whole thing is Satan. Like he said to Jesus, he said, all these kingdoms can I give you if you fall down and worship me. I made the nation to shake at the sound of his fall when I, when, I, when I cast him down to hell with them that descend in the pit. And all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, and all the drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. <clears throat> in other words, there's a, there's a comfort going to come at a time of the restoration of Babylon, and you notice the trees of Lebanon, as the cedar speaks of beauty and Christian virility, righteousness, and so on, like the palm tree. And it says they're going to be comforted when this takes place. That's always the law of the parallelism of Scripture, the blessing, the curse, the blessing, the curse. You can't find a curse without a blessing, and you cannot find a blessing without a curse. And you don't get scared and say, well, there's a God changes his mind. I could be blessed today and cursed tomorrow. That's a law of hogwash. That's your own foolish interpretation of the Bible without knowing what the Bible says. All right? <clears throat> they also went down, at him, down into hell with him unto, unto them that he had slain with the sword, that, that be slain with the sword. And they that were his arm, and that dwelt under his shadow in the midst of the heathen. To whom art thou like, to whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shalt thou be brought down with the trees of Eden into the other parts of the earth, and thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised, and, them, and, and with them that be slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh, and his multitude, saith the Lord. <clears throat> you know there's a picture of that back in the days of Moses. That he was the one that had the great authority and the great power, and God just laid them all low. And now we're looking at that, and... Uh, we're going to go then to Ezekiel, page to chapter 37, and uh, chapter 30, what is it, 36, I guess it is, 36. Thus saith the Lord God, verse 33, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the waste shall be builded, and the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And they shall say, This is the land that was desolate, is become like the Garden of Eden, and the waste and desolate ruined cities are become fenced, are inhabited. <clears throat> now what we gathered by reading this and other portions last Sunday was the fact that Brother Branham used what I term as the law of prophetic projection, uh, wherein he could quite easily fool you uh, by starting at a certain point, like the Bible does, and then suddenly you're projected 2,000 years down the road and you wonder what in the world has gone on because we're not talking and living in a 2,000 year from now period. We're living in a present period. And as I mentioned to you, this is what caused me great trouble when I first began listening to the uh, church ages and the uh, Patmos vision and all where he mentioned that he had phoned Jack... Uh, uh, more, 
in Shreveport and be considered an outstanding Pentecostal theologian, which no doubt he was, well trained by his mother-in-law, without a doubt. <coughs> and uh, uh, he said, now, uh, who is this person? He said, well, he said, that was the glorified Christ. And the Holy Spirit could not give Brother Branham any peace concerning that answer. And God showed him who was the judge. All right, now that's what we're talking about at this moment, a judge. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Shall he destroy the righteous with the wicked? He is judge because he is the Son of Man. And we saw him in his judgeship. And Brother Branham, without explaining that, just mentioned that this is the one that is in Daniel, the Ancient of Days. And threw us down the line 1,000 years at least. And you wonder, what is the world going on? That is not the Ancient of Days per se. It is not the White Throne. There is something wrong. He was using the law of projection, simply prophetic projection. The same yesterday, today, and forever, God always was judge. Keep looking back and place at any place you want, he's judge. You place him judge here, you look down the line, he's judge down there. <clears throat> you see the, the qualities or the roles or the traits which are recessive and dominant. But those, re, those roles or those traits, though recessive or dominant, never ever get lost. There's no losing in a shuffle. It's just that God wants to show something at a particular time from his, we might call his graces or his repertoire of graces, <clears throat> his attributes, that he does not want to show at another time, or he may show several of them, of which may be muted, several, then blindly come forth as some great shining star. Like the same God that came forth on earth here as the great prophet, which he was the prophet. He was the son of man. But you'll notice that suddenly he shone briefly as the Lamb of God. And as the Lamb of God, he died and shed his blood. But within a few days, he was raised and raised into a priesthood. So therefore, the light that shines forth now is that God wants to manifest in a priesthood. And so therefore, he put himself in the form of a son by taking those genes, making a human body, which he could raise up to his right hand and he'd be the mediator and the intercessor. And that's what it is. And that's why we all pray in and through the Lord Jesus Christ, as Brother Branham says, <clears throat> he, sees, he doesn't see us because we're covered by the blood. He hears our voices through the blood, and he looks upon our representative, and that representative is that man Christ Jesus Amen. who is living. <clears throat> he ever liveth to make intercession. <clears throat> so you can see how these roles come and go, and the characters, the characteristics, and the attributes, <clears throat> always the same, but they assume a position that is vital at that very time. <clears throat> now, Brother Branham does the same thing concerning Eden. He goes back and he said, in the beginning there was a male and a female, tip typing Christ in the bride. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> now, they were in this garden, which was Eden. But by reason of sin, they were deprived of the garden. <clears throat> now, we are in position where he is here to take us back with him to that garden. Now that garden is not somewhere in glory somewhere where the first group of people in the first uh, <clears throat> part of the resurrection have risen because they've got glorified bodies and they're somewhere. I don't pretend to know all about it. And I don't know that Brother Branham said very much, but you better believe when they came forth out of the graves, they went somewhere and they would go with him because the Bible speaks of this great one leading this great army up there <clears throat> in the Psalms. All right, now, that great one is here in the form of the Holy Spirit to raise the dead. And they will be standing here upon earth. Then from that moment on, <clears throat> we'll be taken up into a rapture to the wedding supper. And no doubt, there'll be no doubt in my mind at all, we'll be sitting down with the complete bride of all ages. Then that one in chapter 19 with his saints is going to come back to earth, which is Eden again <clears throat> in millennium. But you notice the projection that Brother Branham takes us to is the ultimate. <clears throat> and that ultimate of Eden is Mount Zion, which is the recreated and reformed earth, which is 1,500 miles at the base and 1,500 miles high. And Brother Branham said on this recreated earth, <clears throat> because the earth is going to explode into gases, he said it will be thousands of miles high in here and destroy every term. So well, thank God. See, so why, why would new germs need to be destroyed? Well, they can't be part of the original creation. Amen. <clears throat> so you're going to get rid of them. <clears throat> That's God's business, and I'm glad he's doing it that way. Amen. So, 
<clears throat> then we're going to come there, and the government then <clears throat> will be in Mount Zion, which is a pyramidal city, as in terraces, a city of gold, with the bride there, with the lamb on the throne at the top of Mount Zion, and a pillar of fire over there, over it. And <clears throat> that evidently will be the light that lights the whole earth. So there's no need of a light. There's no need of the sun and the moon. <clears throat> there's no need of a temple. And all these things are structured at that particular time. <clears throat> now, what we're looking at is to ascertain exactly what Eden is all about if we can come to some sort of a conclusion. Well, I don't know that I can tell you too much because I'm just not that smart. <clears throat> but as I was reading over here <clears throat> in the book of um, Ezekiel, uh, chapter 31, we found here <clears throat> that there was a government, a dominion that came out of Eden. And it did, because Satan was there in the Garden of Eden. <clears throat> and the dominion which he took with him in order to build world empires was based upon a lie, the woman being deceived and the man being deceived, and they coming under the thraldom of sin, and man in general forming, therefore, a kingdom and a dominion allowed by God, but not specifically God's, with Satan controlling. And Satan literally has the control, literally, positively, in every single human life by some guise and some method, <clears throat> so that nobody is free of the influence. Now, in here we mention this, how the waters were deep, the roots went out, the branches went higher and higher, and it was greater by far than anything that God was in a mood or a will to produce. <clears throat> so therefore, that which is great and, extens and extensive, ostentatious and overbearing has never been of God. Why, you in your own heart, you know you can't stand a preacher up here that's going to try to beat you over the head and run you. You're going to be fed by the word and ruled by the word. There's something inside of you to feed on the word. You feed the Christ within you, <clears throat> and you've got a proper government. But there is a government. Amen. See, church order is not what a lot of people think of. It's just putting gifts in a room and all. <clears throat> church order is right down the line where you are making Christ preeminent, giving him the headship. And you're not branching out into some great big thing. When somebody told Brother Branham there's 10,000 believer missies, he's too many, got to shake them off. I suppose there's a quarter million now for all I know. How many of them, how many of them got to be shaken off? <clears throat> but you see, what you're looking at here, what came out of Eden? This is what came out of Eden. Now he said the cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. <clears throat> there was nothing that God ever does and will do to eclipse the devil. Now a lot of people think he should. There's a man with a pillar of fire who said, I challenge you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they went back, huh? Amen. That meant nothing. <clears throat> There's nothing that God ever has done or will do to eclipse, to eclipse the kingdom of Satan. So people are always looking for some big thing. <clears throat> Some great thing you're going to get sucked in every single time. Because the trees in Eden that God had were all the trees that he planted, and he himself was the tree of life. <clears throat> so now he's allowed Satan by his very life in his own kingdom <clears throat> to perpetrate upon the people the dastardly thing that they might be deceived by the magnitude of it. <clears throat> That's why it's fear not, little flock. It's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. At the time of the flood, there were only eight people that got saved. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> the greatest lie of this hour is the lie the devil perpetrated upon people <clears throat> is that they're saved, that they're Christians, and they're not. And there's millions and millions. Like they say, millions now living will never die. <clears throat> but I want you to see, here's what Brother Branham was striving to show you, that Satan's kingdom <clears throat> that he wanted way back there when Christ was in the form of Michael, and they were the archangels and leading in the worship of God, Satan desired and demanded a far greater, more wonderful, supernatural kingdom than God did in order to get worship. <clears throat> you notice the very Bible mentions, uh, it's not in this one here, 
be back over here. <clears throat> Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, <clears throat> and the emerald, and the carbuncle of the gold. And you know what he was doing? He was appearing for God illegally as high priest and prophet unto God explaining the word to eat. That's exactly. Because this is almost perfectly <clears throat> the garment or the ephod of the high priest. <clears throat> and the high priest was the one that would lead in worship by taking the proper sacrifice <clears> or <throat> doing the will of God that God wanted done. And what God wanted done was a population of the earth be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And Satan stood there as the high priest and prophet unto Almighty God and brought about the fall of man and his own kingdom. <clears throat> That's what you're looking at. That's why Brother Brandon could preach on Satan's Eden. <clears throat> now, just let me read out of here on page 78 of the uh, Christ the Mystery of God Revealed. I said, one more great remark I want to make. If I have to move over a little of it. Now notice, listen to this. Now is the great thing. Now where is now is where we want to watch. Remember, in the last days we'll exactly go back and vindicate the first day. Now the word vindicate there, <clears throat> I don't know that he means it in the exact sense of vindication, though it would be, but it could be duplicate. A duplication. So just keep those words in mind as though they could go back and forth. See. Adam and Eve, husband and wife, no sin, life, then the fall. <clears throat> now, the only vindication we're going to see is when the dead come out of the ground, we're changed. That there's no more sin. So, as you could take it both ways. Notice, what caused it? Lucifer. Lucifer is doing now as he did it the first time. Just as the kingdom of the Gentiles was brought in, that when King Nebuchadnezzar vindicated the Gentile race by a prophet, who could interpret unknown tongues, visions, and dreams. He's talking about himself when he ran. And it's come down through the Gentiles without anything, just Medo-Persians and iron and so forth. <clears throat> and in the feet it goes out the same way again the Gentile king. What goes out the same way? It goes out by means of a prophet. You interpret dreams and tell these things. Now Lucifer, notice Lucifer in the last days is doing as he did at first. What did Lucifer do? The first thing Lucifer done to separate the fellowship of God the first thing Lucifer did to separate the fellowship of God and man, he wanted to build a united kingdom, a greater splendor, and seemingly more cultured, a greater kingdom than Michael, than Christ had. You got it? Now, if you miss it, just hold up your hands, I'll say it again. See, Lucifer at the beginning, his purpose and heart was to achieve a brighter and greater thing in heaven than Christ had. What he tried to do down on earth. <clears throat> Is that right? By seemingly a more cultured, more beautiful, more splendid, first Splendid for splendid thing than the kingdom of Christ. Do you think we do you think we'll have automobiles in the millennium and airplanes? See, see what Lucifer is doing. Now, the big fancy intellectual denominations are doing the very same thing, gathering themselves together to do this same thing. See, they are gathering, denominating themselves, each one trying to beat the other. That's why I talk about all the trees <clears throat> rising up to cover the other trees. Organization, nations. It's a human. <clears throat> empire that the church is today, not a Christ empire. And every time it'll dwarf <clears throat> Eden, the Eden of God, the servants of the enemy, the uh, ministers of Satan transforming themselves to angels of light under the present day anointing will eclipse anything that this group or any group can produce or even the prophet produced it or what he might produce. <clears throat> They are gathering and denominating themselves, trying to beat the one the other. And now they've got so much splendor, they don't know what to do but to unite with the Catholic Church. See, Lucifer, Lucifer again, building <clears throat> a big um, well, I got my bow back here. <clears throat> a, building a bigger kingdom to push out people that don't believe in denominations, even take their church buildings and make storerooms, and the pastor has no such, no rights at all. And a man that is set, uh, that is a God-sent man will never stay in a denomination after hearing this or seeing it if he's got enough to go out and look at it. Certainly, see, I don't say that critically. I say it truthfully, see, to see that revealed. <clears throat> Notice, in this, la this last days, Lucifer is doing the same thing. Can you see it? 
The devil doing the same thing, building up a hybrid church, a hybrid by hybrid members, hybrid by knowledge instead of the word, by intellectual man instead of born again man, building an intellectual kingdom that will outshine Christ's little itty bitty flock. <clears throat> what is it that did that? Fallen angels. The Bible said it was fallen angels who listened to Lucifer instead of Christ, who they were they once belonged to. Is that right? Now listen close. Fallen angels. What kind of angels? Luther, Wesley, Catholic, Pentecostal, who kept not their first estate like the angels did and fell into organizations like Lucifer's main hold at Nicaea. And what have they done? <clears throat> Organized a great ecumenical association of ministers to make an image unto the beast, as the Bible said, and building a Christian economy that will close the doors of this church and others like it. See Lucifer <clears throat> at his work. I'm trying to bring you the threefold revelation of the mystery of God. What did they do? Sold out to reasonings by, of wisdom and education like Eve did. Fallen angels did. <clears throat> That's under the face of the man they got their big start. Wesley was a man of God. What followed him? Fallen angels got into it. That's true. They, don't, they never said what, what Wesley said after Wesley went. Wesley himself said, he said, I'm not afraid that the name Methodist will ever disappear from the face of the earth, but he said, I'm afraid the double peace will leave. <clears throat> See? And you know the only evidence the pigeon's been there is what? Manure. That's, a, that's exactly what Paul said. That's exactly what Paul said. Amen. Count it but dumb. See? They think they, they think they got the mind of Christ, they got manure heads. Yeah. Right. Now, I tell you something, God doesn't give revelation through garbage tins. Amen. See, you've got to understand that. He only gives it through the rebirth, through the, through the mind that's been cleansed. Amen. See? Mind's part of the spirit. Now, and or, fallen angels, and organizations from men of God who've gone forth to establish truths in the earth before that truth could go along and be proclaimed and get on to the real revelation of Christ, fallen angels came in and took it over and made a denomination out of it. <clears throat> and you know what that does? That ends up under the second under the under under the uh, second Thessalonians, the second chapter. Or in the time comes that there must be a decision of truth. And that decision for truth is thoroughly uh, vindicated. <clears throat> then there is uh, nobody there that wants to take that vindication of the Lord's and uh, use it in his proper uh, sphere. <clears throat> they just don't want to do that. And their, pro their proper understanding. <clears throat> now, uh, with that, <clears throat> I want to go over here and read on of the Satan's Eden. Now, Satan began a religious deceit in Eden and has continued ever since, not by setting up a bunch of communists. Communists have nothing to do with this. It is a church that's where you have to watch, see? It's not the communists that will deceive the very elected. It's the church that will deceive the very elected. See, it isn't communists. We know they deny God. They're antichrist. Sure they are in principle, but they are not the antichrist. The antichrist is religious very religious and can quote the scripture and make it look so plain as Satan did back there in the beginning. He quoted everything right down. God has said, thou shalt not eat of the tree of life. See, she said, yes, we may eat of all the trees of the garden, but there is a tree in the midst of the garden that God said not to eat for, not even touch it because the day we did, that day we died. He said, oh, surely you'll not die. But let me give you the reason why God said this. See, it's because see now <clears throat> what he quoted was the truth, you see. He said, it will open your eyes. It will make you no good and wrong. You'll be like God then if you can do it. That is just what he wants to do, and that is just the same thing he's trying to do today. It's, it's a big religious deceit since the beginning of Eden and has been ever since. See, because he was in Eden. That's where it started. <clears throat> in Adam's time, it was a deceit. In Noah's time, it was a deceit. In Jesus' time, the same. Now here, now is the same, the same way a religious deceitfulness. Is that ready to turn over? Now, we will notice the earth when God had it under control. Now, when God had it under his control, then when Satan took over by rejecting the word of God, God one time had the earth under his control. He set it in its orbit. He put it to make it work. He did everything, had it in control. Now, we'll compare that with after Satan took his control. Now, it took God 6,000 years. It didn't take him that long, but he took that long, 6,000 years, because we're taught that one day in heaven is a thousand years earth. And it was 6,000 years <clears throat> or six days that God built the earth. Now, it took God 6,000 years to establish it. 
plant it with good seed, and bring forth everything after its kind. Everything must come forth of its kind. All of his seeds were good. And so it must bring forth after its kind. God took 6,000 years. Now that's what you've got to get back to. There's nothing there but the seed that God planted. For every plant, Heavenly Father has not planted to be rooted up. <clears throat> now, listen, finally, when he got it all made, and finally we arrived with his headquarters of the earth in a beautiful spot laying east of Eden called the Garden of Eden. God made the world's headquarters in the Garden of Eden in Egypt. Right at the east end of the garden was his headquarters. And over all the situation, he put his son and his son's wife over it all. That's right. <clears throat> That's what God did. He put them in full control. They could speak to the winds and they would cease to blow. They would speak to the tree and it would move from here to there. The lion and the wolf fed together and the lamb laid down with them. There was no evil. It was perfect peace, perfect harmony, everything in perfection. When God had it under his control, and that's government. <clears throat> and notice, he had his world, he had all in operation. He had everything coming, everything eating vegetation, nothing to die, nothing to be ruined, nothing spoiled, nothing. It was just perfect. And over it all, he placed his beloved children, his son and his daughter, a husband and wife to control it. <clears throat> and that's what I wanted to bring to your attention, that this is what I said last Sunday, and I'm bringing you the quotes, that there was a government involved. <clears throat> the first government was the government of Almighty God on earth, and it was a government that God gave to man, and he gave it first of all when man and woman was in one spirit form and no flesh. <clears throat> they led the beasts of the fields and all of those things as the spirit of God leads us. Then he put them in a human body, in a body, whereby they could be sensate until the ground, and they would just do little things about the garden, very happy, and everything under in a perfect a place of perfect bliss and a perfect love and <clears throat> a most wonderful life. Well, Satan came around, and as he did in the kingdom of heaven, he now decides to attempt, and he tries, and he successfully, and he's successful in his attempt to delude the woman. Now remember that man was not in the transgression. Adam was not deceived. He was not in the transgression. The woman was deceived. She was in the transgression. Now what you're looking at is a type. <clears throat> the woman types the church. She types the bride of Christ, the one that was supposed to be, because Adam is in the, he was in the image of Christ, and the woman was in the image of man. And so therefore, as he followed Christ, she was to follow him. <clears throat> For as God manifested himself in, what, in the form of, which he didn't manifest himself, that people were to follow that what that manifestation brought forth at that particular time. <clears throat> All right, everything was very fine at that particular time, and this was literally heaven on earth. Because remember Jesus, that they said to him, <clears throat> uh, what about the coming of the kingdom? Why, well, he said, the kingdom's coming, all right, and you won't even notice it because the kingdom of heaven is in your midst right now. <clears throat> so therefore... Where the allegiance is, that is going to form the kingdom. Yeah. And whose understanding and tutelage you're under. <clears throat> that would be a forming of the kingdom. So the minute that Eve put herself under the tutelage of the enemy, <clears throat> the kingdom then would be, at, she would be, the kingdom would be rent from her. <clears throat> because that's what God said to, Nebuchadnezzar, to Belshazzar. The kingdom is rent from you. And that's true. <clears throat> they lost that kingdom. Now, I want to look at some things there <clears throat> before we go on. And uh, they're written here in the Bible. Now, notice. Let me see if I can see something here I want to look at first. <clears throat> well, we could just say that nature fell with Eve. I mentioned that last Sunday, too. <clears throat> that nature positively fell. And man, and, and, and Adam and Eve came to the place where God said, lest they stretch forth their hands and take of the tree of life and live forever, we have to put the cherubim in front of it, whereby they cannot live forever. <clears throat> so therefore, they lost their seat of government, which was in, in the Lord. And to see this, we read, uh, beginning here, Genesis 2, 7, 8. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed in the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree 
in the presence of the sight and good for food, and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge <coughs> of good and evil. And with that, the third chapter, 22 to 24, the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove up the man, and he placed it in the east of, of the garden of Eden cherubim, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep <clears throat> the way of the tree of life. Now, <clears throat> the significant thing <clears throat> that I want to bring to your attention here is this, that it says here in the word, therefore the Lord God, let me just get this first of all here, verse 7, 2, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils a breath of life and man became a living soul. And God, after that, when that man was made, he planted a garden eastward in Eden. <clears throat> and he put the man in there and gave him his commandments. Now watch what happens after that when the fall takes place. The man fell, so he cannot now put forth his hand and live forever. <clears throat> he cannot be a, a, an actual part of the kingdom of God on earth. It's rent from him. But watch. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. In plain English, in plain understanding, the body of Adam was not made from the soil in the Garden of Eden. It was made from the soil that was not in the Garden of Eden. That's right, he, wasn't, he was not made of that soil. <clears throat> he was made of the ground outside the Garden of Eden. So he was not a part of that kingdom which was there upon earth. He literally was not made of that substance. Now you can just think what you want about it, but there's a type that runs here. And that's a type we're going to look at. <clears throat> that type is over here in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And it's explained to us <clears throat> very thoroughly and unequivocally. Beginning at verse 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it? That was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. Afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. So what you're looking at in the Garden of Eden <clears throat> is the tree of life, which is the man from heaven, the Lord from heaven, that took upon himself a physical form. <clears throat> what you're seeing here, this man here was not made of the same substance. He was not. Because when God took his own attributes to form the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> he did not do so to form Adam. Even in the spiritual realm, it wasn't so. For it is not said that Jesus said, I came from God and I go to God. Adam could not say that. See? The scripture said the only begotten the boot of the Father. Adam could not say that. Yeah. Because he wasn't of that caliber. You're seeing here a beautiful type <clears throat> wherein God wants to have his complete form of attributes displayed to the world. <clears throat> so man is allowed in this garden which he can come back to. But notice that man of himself, though in the image of God, a spirit being, <clears throat> is not the express image as Christ the tree of life. There's a difference there. One is of the earth, earthy, the other is the Lord of heaven. <clears throat> so I want to show you that this here <clears throat> is where God had a kingdom on earth. And that, that's why I often say concerning Melchizedek. <clears throat> they say, well, here's the priest of the Most High God. And he, and he, and he comforted Abraham after the heat of the battle. And he gave him the elements of the communion, which was the bread and the wine. Now that man must have had to have a retinue. That man must have had to be known. There had to be buildings. There had to be an army. <clears throat> there had to be every single thing there. How long it was there, I don't know, and I care less. <clears throat> I only know that it was there. And so there was a literal form of government back in the beginning of the Garden of Eden. And there's been a literal form of government 
all the time <clears throat> through these 6,000 years <clears throat> in a dimension. <clears throat> See? <clears throat> and what comes out of that dimension is what brings us to the place of a return to where Adam and Eve were when they were in that dimension which was here on earth and in his visible form where God was ruling and they were ruling under God. <clears throat> now that's what Brother Branham tells us we're going to get back to. And the move is to have a glorified body which is going to get us there. <clears throat> that's why it's not going to be the same body. Our, our bodies will go back to the <clears throat> basic original elements. <clears throat> gases, what have you. Then God will recreate again and bring forth a body, not what you have now, but a body which you're supposed to have. <clears throat> because you see that, it's told you in the, in the very first chapters of Genesis that you're supposed to have an immortal body to be truly resident without any time of a loss where you can be non-resident. <clears throat> see, once you get to a certain place, there is no time, no place where God can ever cast you out. See, there's no way. <clears throat> but under that condition, there could be and there was a separation. <clears throat> See? So that's what we're looking at here. And I hope you're catching my picture because you got a type. Adam was of the earth, earthy. Notice, not just of the earth, he was earthy earth. <clears throat> he wasn't even of the earth of which God's kingdom on earth was. <clears throat> now notice, he was placed in there he was allowed to stay there, and he did stay there. And he could have communion with God. <clears throat> See? Now, Satan had access. But it wasn't his right. Now, Satan's been had access and does have access <clears throat> to every single thing for 6,000 years. And you notice that his fallen angels also have an access. Now, at the end time, you notice it brings you very close to see the anointed ones of the end time. <clears throat> They've got an access. But they're not part of it, and they're not allowed in it and established. And they'll never come into immortality. Now, it tells you right here, <clears throat> the first man is here, the earth, the second man is the Lord from heaven. Exactly right. That was exactly Adam. <clears throat> he was not of the Garden of Eden substance. He was not of the true kingdom of God. <clears throat> Where you understand that God is that kingdom. The whole, the, all of it's God. Amen. Now, Hallelujah. and as is the earthy, such are they that are earthy. And as the heavenly, such as they that are also heavenly. <clears throat> now it tells you that right there particularly. There's a heavenly, there's an earthy. Now watch. And as we bore the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now remember, there's no flesh and blood up there to begin with. It was down here. Amen. And the inheritance has got to come back to earth. So you have born, and you have born the image of the earthy <clears throat> in order to bear the image of the heavenly. Flesh and blood cannot inherit in God, neither corruption nor incorruption. <clears throat> but I, but, but you, can, you, can, you can gain a lot from it. You can siphon from it. You can barge in on it. People discerning, people using gifts. Judas using gifts. See, <clears throat> that, that dispels a lot of your mystery concerning how can you be anointed ones at the end time? Started way back there in the garden. Amen. <clears throat> sure. Amen. There's no way that you can change the word of God. Satan right up there amongst all the brethren. When the sons of God came together to worship, all the morning stars came, Satan was there in the midst. Amen. <clears throat> when Adam and Eve was down here, Satan was right in the midst. Amen. See? When the disciples were formed around Christ, Satan was right there in the midst. <clears throat> when the message got going under Paul, they let in false brethren come in, tried to pervert the very gospel and turn the very things of God to some of the men of God got turned around. But a man stood there with a the revelation. That man had real love because his love was, first of all, word-inspired. The life that was in the word that was in Paul <clears throat> was the word that stood right up. Amen. Why? Because he was not going to betray Christ or the people. Amen. You notice that Eve betrayed the tree of life and Adam betrayed the tree of life. <clears throat> betrayed every successive generation. But God through his mercy, mercy <clears throat> is going to bring the people back to that Eden. Going to get them right back of the total headship. 
Now notice Brother Branham said, <clears throat> on earth, <clears throat> Satan is bound by circumstances. Because there's a bride that cannot be tested unto sin. There's no way. So Satan could come and go and do anything he wanted. <clears throat> but you notice before the new Jerusalem sets in, Satan and all the nations and all that followed are going to be destroyed that be neither root nor branch. For after the Malachi 4 visitation of Elijah, <clears throat> where the word comes forth, where God comes down using a prophet, that's perfect type again, in order to bring a restoration, because it is a restoration, and that restoration is a restoration of the word, <clears throat> everything spoken by the prophet Moses, which was right in here in the book, the first few chapters, the first chapters of Genesis. <clears throat> we are entering into that period now, so we're passing now from the negative to the positive. <clears throat> and it's going on more and more through the word of the Lord which has been given to us. <clears throat> All right. We see here then, it is significant that a certain separation from Christ's attributes that pertain to immortality were necessary from that time of the fall until the time just prior to Eden, as it says in 1 Corinthians <clears throat> uh, 15, 50 to 55. <clears throat> now, from that time where flesh and blood could not inherit, in other words, Adam could not stretch forth his hand <clears throat> and live forever, though that is a part of the kingdom because the kingdom of God is forever. And the kingdom of God necessitates the subjects that he ordained in order for him to be God. And a part of his Godship had to be kingship. Complete ruler. <clears throat> so there's got to be a restoration. Now Adam could not have it at that time. Now he could stretch forth, they could stretch forth their hands as it were in supplication. <clears throat> they could stretch forth looking to that time. But there was no way they could stretch forth and take anything at that time that would give them immortality. And there has been nothing in the word that gives a man a guarantee of immortality outside of Elijah coming. Amen. You can say what you want, but that's true. Amen. <clears throat> because you'll arise healing these wings, that's immortality. Amen. In that chapter. All right. It says, flesh and neither does corruption inherit in corruption of flesh and blood <clears throat> here at the kingdom of God. But I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep like Adam and Eve and all the rest. But we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling eye, at the last trump, as some people say in twinkling eye means in the, in the atoms. I don't know. For the trumpet shall sound, <clears throat> the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put an incorruptible in this mortal immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, <clears throat> that is an inner garment. It's, a, it's called a vesture. And it's an inner vesture, it's not an outer. That's why Brother Branham could scream in prophecy, <clears throat> the sword of the king, why he said, that's the word of God. Bring on your holy vesture with the holy word of God standing by. The man no more knew what he was saying than anything at that particular moment because he said prophets would say things they didn't understand. <clears throat> because see, what's a sword got to do with vesture? Like dumping somebody? The, the person's already got the vesture. This brings the vesture. His own mind went to the fact that was it something like nagging, you dump somebody. <clears throat> what was it? It had nothing to do with that. It had to do with that word. Yeah. See? Why? Because it was the word that took them to mortality, it will have to be a word that takes them to immortality. Amen. Because under the correct word, they could live in the shadow constantly of immortality <clears throat> until the space of time ran out that God had allocated for mortality. Because that's what it's all about. Yeah. God's got a timetable. <clears throat> Now you see, the time is running out. That's why Brother Branham said, time runs out. What time runs out? The time of, the time of mortality runs out. <clears throat> That's what you're looking at. You're looking at the time of immortality. And they have blended together. Because there's a generation standing here, of which we're a part, that shall not taste of death. The scripture becomes a null that says it's appointed and a man wants to die. And after this, the judgment. So, there is this coming on. It says, death will be swallowed up in a victory. O death, where is thy sting? O death, where is thy victory? <clears throat> See? Now, 
This, of course, is Malachi 4 and 2, and it's also uh, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. <clears throat> and let's go over here to Matthew 4 and 17 and begin to see something here. <clears throat> I beg your pardon, Matthew 17. Did I say 4? Matthew 17. We're starting at the beginning at the top verse up there, the last verse of 16 chapter. Verily I say unto you, there's some standing here which shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of man, the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. <clears throat> now that's what it says there. <clears throat> coming in his kingdom. Now what was Brother Branham said? The kingdom of God was what? Eden. So there will be those standing who will not see this one until it's time to take back Eden. Okay. After six days, that's 6,000 years, one day per thousand years, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. <clears throat> that's he folds them in his arms and carries them up. That's rapture. And he was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, his raiment was white as light. And that sounds like that chapter over there in uh, First. Uh, Revelation where he's talking about the judge. And behold, there appeared there Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then said Peter unto the Lord, it's good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let's make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For I spoke, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, and well, well please hear you him. And the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces, and they were sore afraid. And Jesus said, Arise, and be not afraid. And lift up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Now he wasn't transfigured at that point. He's, he was right back to the normal. <clears throat> he said, Tell the vision to no man, till the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. The disciples asked him, saying, Why then does the scribes say that Elijah must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Truly Elijah shall truly first come and restore all things, but I say Elijah has already come. They knew him not, but have done unto him whatever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spoke unto them of John the Baptist. <clears throat> now you notice in the Garden of Eden <clears throat> that Christ was that tree of light. Brother Branham brings it out to us which he most certainly was, <clears throat> the tree of life. Now, you'll notice that that is the presence of God, God present. And the tree, of course, is a symbol. Now, God present in the garden, God present here, signifies the return of the kingdom, a restoration, because that's what it is. See? <clears throat> so what did God do? God barred man from his presence. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> so he could not touch that tree and live. He could not get it. So what I'm trying to show you here <clears throat> is the interconnection between that hour and this hour, and that is the presence of God is now available to the people in order that his presence bring about immortality for the same one that is present now in our midst. Christ in the form of the Holy Ghost to raise the dead <clears throat> is here to change the saints. And remember, it was in the form of the Holy Spirit that he led the people out of the graves. <clears throat> it was. God raises the dead. And he raised his own son. So we're back to the, we're back to the picture of what he said in Luke the 17th chapter when they said, tell us when the kingdom of God comes. He said, the kingdom of God comes comes without observation. It'll be there and you won't even know it. The kingdom of God is in your midst. <clears throat> now we're talking about a kingdom of God on earth. We're not worried about the heavenly one. God can do what he wants, what he wants about it. Because we're not enjoined to believe that we have a part of that. But it's God's kingdom we're being restored to, the one that's back upon earth here. <clears throat> so what is he doing? He's bringing us to the place tonight by his presence where the dead will be raised and we should become immortal, literally stretch forth the hand, as it were. <clears throat> In other words, by our own free will, literally take. See? God stopped man from a free will. He was a free moral agent, and he could have taken. But he denied himself that possibility, so he doesn't have the opportunity until God extends it at the time that mortality runs out. That's as simple as ABC. <clears throat> mortality is running out. Because the Bible says so. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, mortality shall be swallowed up of immortality and corruptibility of incorruptibility <clears throat> by the word 
that's going to do it Amen. at the last trump. And the last trump is Revelation 10 and 7. <clears throat> when the trumpet begins to sound, the end time. You have the very presence of God in the form where in the dead will be raised and we're going to be chained. <clears throat> now, with this one can see that if Eve and Adam were allowed back into Eden, <clears throat> which was the perfect dimension and the positive of the universe, they themselves could live immortal. So therefore, if we ever come to the place of a dimension, <clears throat> and the dimension is shown here in the 16th and 17th chapter of Matthew, you get to the place of that dimension, which is 2 Corinthians, the 3rd and the 4th chapter. <clears throat> it's also in Revelation 22, when the book becomes unsealed and cannot be sealed again. When you come to that dimension, and we've been progressing from glory to glory, <clears throat> There is no way that you cannot partake. As it was death to attempt to stretch forth the hand and make a contact, <clears throat> it is now death if the hand is not stretched forth in order to make a contact. Amen. Because man is free to enter into immortality. <clears throat> now, they could not live forever. <laughs> they were cut off from that life that God could give. But now let's go to, 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 uh, to uh, Revelation chapter 21. We're still talking about Eden, as Brother Branham described it. 21, 7, and 8. Or 7, 8, is it? <clears throat> well, we can start there. Or we take 9. There came one of the seven angels that had the seven plagues, <clears throat> full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. <clears throat> now, descending out of heaven is going to come down from that dimension to this dimension <clears throat> because it's going to descend upon the earth. It's not going to go anyplace else. Not upon Mars or Jupiter or something like that. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. That's far enough there. <clears throat> uh, let me go back and read this 7 and 8 here too. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I'll be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire which burns with brimstone, <coughs> which is the second death. So here's what you see here. You see the what we read in, in, in um, Ezekiel. <coughs> Those were departing that came out of Eden and eclipsed Eden, that had the great kingdoms, they're all going to be destroyed <clears throat> because there, that came out of there was fearful, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, liars, <clears throat> and all the rest. Yeah, See? Because it came by way of a perversion. But we're going to be restored back to that great tree of life, as it says over here in Revelation chapter 22, showed me a river of pure water of light, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it, neither side of the river, there is a tree of life which bears to our man her fruits, and yielded fruit every month, and her leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nation, there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they'll see his face, his name shall be upon their foreheads, and be no night, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> which is a new Jerusalem. Now, under Eden, Eden, Edenic conditions, it is certain man could live a never-ending life, which he could have done, because uh, a sin was put out of Eden. There's no, there, was sin, there was no sin in it. <clears throat> now, scientists know that, and they keep trying to find the key to nutrition or something that's going to give a man some type of immortality, but he can't do it. And what they don't realize is the thing I've already said tonight, <clears throat> that... Could man remain in the presence of God? He would have naturally then had a life bestowed upon him that would have gone on forever and ever. <clears throat> that is until immortality, until mortality ran a span out. But it, what I'm trying to show you is that every place you turn, <clears throat> it has got to do with the presence of Almighty God. And Christ, the tree of life, can only be touched at this particular moment. <clears throat> now, I'm going to leave that here.
and go back to looking at what we read a while ago <clears throat> on page, uh, if I find my pages here, there we are, we're getting to the... Uh, <coughs> I have to put that somewhere, didn't I? I can't find it. I'll just let you go home. <coughs> I found it. You can't go home. <coughs> it says here, I now remember that he is that tree of life, contrary to the serpent seed. You see, he's that seed, the woman's seed, the tree of life in the garden. <coughs> All right? We've got a thought here now then uh, concerning the fact <coughs> of serpent seed. Okay? How did serpent seed come? By the mingling of a lie with the truth in the minds of two animal beings, wherein the one serpent animal mind, through Satan, deliberately implanted the lie in an innocent, innocent human animal mind, and then the two diverse species with disparate bodies of flesh <clears throat> produced this creature, the seed of the serpent, which was Cain, an hybrid animal. Now, let's just go back to, to 1 Corinthians 15. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, and get that um, 38 verse talking about seed. But God gives it a body that pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. There's one flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, <clears throat> another of fishes, another of birds, and so on. <clears throat> now what you see here is Brother Branham brought us the truth that these two animal bodies were close enough where they could bring forth a hybrid, <clears throat> which they did, which was a serpent seed cane. So the bodies were disparate. They were different. Now, she was a female, and he was a male, and he was a giant. And evidently, according to Brother Branham, he was very dark. <clears throat> a lot of people want to run with that and try to make the Negro race or the black people the serpent seed, which is a lie, because the truth of the matter is we've all got it in us. So it hasn't got a thing to do with... Uh, with what nationality you are, what race you're from, but the, but the Bible does actually forbid the mixing of races, as Brother Brown teaches us. <clears throat> okay, so the two fleshes were mingled, and Cain was mingled seed, which types the denomination, like we read Brother Brown said. And they go all through all the motions and visible experiences of worship apart from a true revelation. <clears throat> now that's what they do. They go through every single motion and maybe do it even better than the Christian but it's apart from revelation. Now, here is where the bulk <clears throat> of my ministry is built <clears throat> in teaching over the years the discovering of the difference of righteousness from unrighteousness. And unless you see this, you'll never follow me anywhere. <clears throat> You're going to get sidetracked someplace because you haven't got your Bible right. In 1 John, the third chapter, <clears throat> now it tells you, he that committeth sin is of the devil, verse 8, for the devil sinned from the beginning. What beginning was that? The time that he went into iniquity, where he decided to have a great temple, a great kingdom. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. <clears throat> destroy what works of the devil? The works of iniquity, which are works of unrighteousness, which you and I have, natural, by natural tendency. <coughs> now we can get someplace with God. Whosoever is born of God did not commit sin. <clears throat> For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. So that tells you right there something about the elect. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. <clears throat> now the big thing that's always thrown in there is this. If you don't love your brother, you're going to go to hell. And they always confuse the loving of a brother with cow cowing to sin. Uh, we've got the problem right in this church here that we're thrown at from all sides. <clears throat> and I can name you names from right around the world. We have a rotten spirit because we dare to preach what we preach. We don't go anywhere and bother anybody. You can't get our tapes unless you beg for them and try to bore or steal them. We're not in that market. <clears throat> but the preachers all got to say, well, I believe what Vail teaches, right? But he's got that bad spirit. My bad spirit is to stand with this word and say either they're right or we're right. Amen. Amen. 
on what we teach. <clears throat> but all the time, it's the same. It's the same cry all the time. We've got to tote it to them. Go back to Pentecost or do something else. I'm not doing it. Yeah. See? <clears throat> if I got to die, I want to die for something decent. Amen. <laughs> I was in Pentecost long enough. <clears throat> now you do what you want. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Who are the we? Those that don't sin. Yes. That the seed remains in him. <clears throat> okay. All right. <clears throat> This is a message from the beginning. We should love one another. Now listen. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one that slew his brother. Now the question then arises. If Cain was of the wicked one and slew his brother, then Abel was of the wicked one also. Well, make up your mind. I don't think you follow me. Let's go over it again. Abel's the brother of Cain. And Cain was of the wicked one. And the moral is you shouldn't kill your brother. You shouldn't hate him. And Abel was Cain's brother. So therefore, Abel was of the wicked one. Now make up your mind. That's not what it says. Cain was of the wicked one. <clears throat> Abel was the son of Adam in the image of God. This was an illegitimate <clears throat> hybrid. The serpent seed. That's who he was. And the works of his father he did. And was manifest when he did the works of his father. He took the word of God and misplaced and misdivided it. Amen. But Abel didn't. Amen. One was a work of righteousness. One was a work of unrighteousness. <clears throat> and the unrighteousness made him hate his brother. <clears throat> and demanded that his brother in the flesh, half brother, where you want to put it, <clears throat> would listen to him and do what he said. And because he stood with his revelation, his so-called brother killed him. And now what do you do? You don't turn your back on the revelation. You stand with your revelation and let them do what they want and you hang to your revelation and you're willing to defy them. Otherwise, Paul was a jerk. And he should have said, now, now, brother Peter, you and I are brothers. Bless your dear sweetheart. So they were. <clears throat> and Paul did not hate his brother, and he did not hate his brethren, but he stood up against those false brethren. Amen. <clears throat> and his anger waxed so hot when he's, when he's pale <clears throat> that God said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. And Barnabas turned to the Judaizers. He said, out! Paul didn't have any love, that stupid goat. Everybody talks loud, 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 and quotes 1 Corinthians 13. <clears throat> if you compromise this word, you're right back where Eve was. Amen. Yeah. Right. See? Now, herein is the difference. <clears throat> One person took a, a revelation. The other person didn't take a revelation. <clears throat> it's like Brother Brown said. When Jesus stood before that bunch of the Sanhedrin, oh, they said, yes. We understand and know the scriptures, right? But you're not the guy to bring it. Oh, we know Elijah's going to come, but William Bradley, <clears throat> give me old raspberry. <clears throat> give me the old sign of disgust. Sure. <clears throat> Call him a devil, even. <clears throat> well, we believe it's supposed to be blaspheming the Holy Ghost. And the prophet himself says, "What well, wonderful God has given us the gift, the, the gift of his son in the form of the Holy Ghost. So that's blasphemy? I'll ask you, who's blasphemy? Amen. <laughs> We're supposed to stand back and see all as well. Now listen, I can fellowship with any of those men. In fact, I made my peace with some and I enjoy it. I can phone them conversation. That's where it ends. I'll be nice to him or her. <clears throat> you want to be nice to me? That's your business. But the fellowship's gone. But what fellowship have light with darkness? Yeah, amen. 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 You tell me, I'd like to know. Amen. Oh, sure, they're brothers. We're all brothers. <clears throat> There's a universal brotherhood. They're all branches. Don't kid yourself for one minute, but there's a dividing line. 
<clears throat> you say, well, do you think you're seeing somebody else's? Yes, it could be. I don't know. I'm just going along for the ride. <clears throat> I think he's driving it. Now this king is the wicked one that slew his brother. Wherefore slew him? Because his own works were evil. And the Bible says concerning that evil work that Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Cain offered an excellent sacrifice. And the word came back and says, <clears throat> If thou, ha thou hast offered right, but if thou hast not rightly divided, hast thou not sinned? <clears throat> then a worship of God, according to the word, outside of the legitimate, interpreted, revealed framework of the world, it word is iniquitous. Therefore, to worship outside of this message is iniquity. Yes. <clears throat> you do what you want. I'm just quoting the prophet and the word of God. I don't care anybody else says. That's, that's their business. <clears throat> oh, everybody wants to believe the prophet. Oh, prophet, prophet, prophet. Listen, that's not enough. <clears throat> that was the tie post. That is not the tie post anymore. William Branham was not the tie post. Amen. Well, sir, he decreased and God increased. Amen. <clears throat> we have the word. Amen. For all manifestation was to vindicate a revelation. <clears throat> I just think, understand people. Brother Brandon said, God didn't give a true healing revival. He said, give the same old tired message. <clears throat> There's a dear, I've told you about this weird, dear sweet woman in, in, in China. Her name is a good Anglo-Saxon name, McClellan or Atkinson or some name as far as I remember. <clears throat> she had a little group of Chinese girls over there. I told you about it. And it was always children, Christ in the midst. Christ in the midst. Christ in the midst. So the poor girls don't have soap on like a, something like a George Mueller story, but not as great as George Mueller in his office. And so the poor girls had no soap. She said, well, children, don't worry, girls. Christ in the midst. Christ in the midst. They praise God. Christ in the midst. Not long, knock comes to the door. Could you use some soap? Here's a whole basket. The food turned up. No, not to worry. Christ in the midst. And he is. There's no problem. Christ was in the midst. <clears throat> and the food came in. One day the commies came too. And you know what they do? They rape. That's all they care for. When they're in army, that's what they're going to do. Rape, rape, rape. You study what they, what they did in Germany. You study how Eisenhower, under under Roosevelt and under Truman, <clears throat> those men allowed the, the Russians to come into eastern Germany and to Poland and do what they did. You just go home tonight and want to blow your brains up for shame. But you're Americans because you've got to bear the shame. And you know we're going to get the bomb for it, too. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Threw the matches on, their, on the street and just raped everyone. And Stalin said, oh, they killed ours. Didn't mind whom he killed. We'll have, we'll have children from them. Talk about filth. And people are supposed to pray for Stalin and and, and believe in reconciliation and all these things. I'm going to, I'm going to stand here where those guys get theirs. Not that I'm any, any good. I'm going to stand with God. Amen. <clears throat> so the commies came through, the Chinese, with their raping and their pillaging, because that, that's the name of the game. And they looked in on the, on the place where all these lovely young maidens were. And the one said, fear not. She said, Christ in the midst. He's here. Not one girl was touched. Now, Brother Brandon says, my ministry is to declare that he is here. Amen. The same old tired message then? The same old tired message of the woman in China? <clears throat> and for all these years, 2,000 years, don't give me that nonsense. Or William Branham was nothing but some kind of a gooseneck and foodist. <clears throat> he was some kind of phenomenon. We're getting them all the time. Spirit Doctors, the, the spirit that haunted her ego, the surgeon Rusty Knife is back again, performing operations and marvels down in Brazil. Who needs William Branham then? Because he evidently laid an egg. Because he preached the same old tired message, or didn't he? And he's not here the way people think he's here. He's got to be here in another way than he's here. Amen. He's here just as he was. Elohim came down. In the 18th chapter of the book of Genesis, just before the coming of the Son in flesh, and talked to a prophet face to face. The judge of all of the earth said, The righteous will not perish with him. This is the day of the Lord coming on. I've sent you Elijah. <clears throat> you get people to believe that. And say, oh, if people, our people all believe that, do they? Then go all the rest of the way to what the prophet taught. Just believing God sent a prophet doesn't say, you better be full of the Holy Ghost, Brother Branham warned of the token. <clears throat> he said, the token is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You say, I got the token, you got the Lord Jesus Christ himself? Don't lie to me. You've got an infinitesimal amount. You've got a drop of the vast oceans of water. Amen. Yeah. 
You have that tiny little bit of sperm, that little bit of light, but you don't have personally the Lord Jesus Christ himself and the pillar of fire that spoke to that man, spoke to Paul. That belongs to a prophet. <clears throat> well, there's a difference, my brother and my sister. Not to be confused in these days, it's too late. <clears throat> now it says, his own works were evil, his brothers were righteous. <clears throat> One was doing, both were doing, or literally, the same things that were in the Word. But one divided correctly and one didn't. <clears throat> That's how it is. The blood doesn't avail unless there is a revelation. There's a light. That's why I don't worry one little bit. Is the blood on the mercy seat or off the mercy seat? I can tell you one thing. The blood always avails when you walk in the light. You got fellowship one with the other and the blood is cleansing. <clears throat> but until that time, no, an end time evangelism that brings people to Christ is this word of this hour. Not sometime, not way back there. Do you think when they went out, when Paul went out, he said, hey, way back in the days of Moses, some great thing took place. <clears throat> I want to tell you all about Moses, bless God, what he did. He talked about Jesus risen from the dead. Are we going to go back now and tell all of what Paul said? No, we're going to tell about this one that's appearing to the Gentiles, proving he's risen from the dead, risen amongst us and doing the same works. He's here today, descended, having descended with a shout. <clears throat> Voice the archangel, trumpet of God. There's your message, brother, sister. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. <clears throat> now, just a minute. Cain was the hater, and he was called a brother, and now he's called the world. Make up your mind. <clears throat> Old John's not very clear, and the reason he's not very clear because people don't understand this. When you understand the truth, it's not hard <clears throat> because you can put it together. But I just, I just read it to you. Either Abel was serpent, was he was of the devil, if you want to call him a brother. And then evils of the world. And if, if John can make such lousy mistakes, <clears throat> then what could this man do? I'd hate to think what he could do. Because John was just a man that had visions. This man is supposed to see God face to face and talk, even apparently in a form the way Moses and, and Paul did. But John never. John saw him in the flesh from that time on with a vision. <clears throat> Voices. So if this fellow could make a boo-boo like that, this fellow is in a much better place to make a far bigger boo-boo. Where do you stand today, brothers and sisters? You can see there's no mistake. Somebody's wrong. Well, it can't be wrong. <clears throat> I can't be wrong in this scripture. No way. There's no way. We know we passed it down late because we love the brethren. <clears throat> Birds of feather flock together. Sons who make love. Doves make love to doves. They don't even the crows. He that love with naughty brother abides in death. Well, you can't have your cake and eat it. You can't have both sides. <clears throat> you can't be white black. You can't be drunk sober. You can't be sleep awake. You can't be saved lost. You can't be brother and sinner. What are you? You've got to understand there's a regimen played down here. And you've got the law of parallel with the scripture. The good, the bad, the good, the bad. The righteous, unrighteous, righteous, unrighteous. Cursing, blessing, blessing, cursing. Black, white. Dark, light, dark, light, dark. Light. This is that lousy time of just in between. In evening time it shall be light, which neither day or night. <clears throat> light comes. But you see, in the evening time, like nobody likes too well. Because they love that glare way back there. They don't know it's the same sun that rose in the east as the one that comes to the west. <clears throat> they don't know the Alpha and Omega precept in principle. They don't know the same one came to, to Paul. At the time, he was baptizing saints all around and giving them himself. He came to Paul to give the revelation. And they can't put it together that this man here could be getting a revelation. This man... Right now, notice, this man from this could be getting a revelation while this was giving him himself all around. Mm -hmm. They can't put it together. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you something. This man here and this, and you can have millions from this and trillions, will never diminish this or make Amen. this. Amen. This is only a loan to this man, mm -hmm. lending himself, giving grace and glory to the human race. 
time people understood these things. <clears throat> Will they? I don't know. That's in the hands of God. The seed of the woman came from the truth of God in the mind of God, with God deliberately implanting that truth in the receptive virgin mind of Mary, and apart from any mingling of mental or physical, brought forth not a human being in the literal sense of the word, but a body fashioned like a man that was truly a part of God, and not a part so much of Mary, except that she functioned as a laboratory through her chemical processes, channeling the elements of the earth to the implanted fetus of supernatural cells. It's on tape. You didn't get it all, did it? We rolled the tape back. I'll read it again. <clears throat> How did the seed of the woman come? The seed of the woman came not from a lie, came not from an animal, came not from a man, came not any way but this way, opposite to the seed of the, of the servant, came from the truth of God, in the mind of God, that's the truth of God, was in the mind of God, with God deliberately <clears throat> implanting that truth in the receptive virgin mind of Mary, apart from any mingling of the mental or physical, brought forth, not a human being in the literal sense of the word, but a body fashioned like a man, because he was born fashioned like, that was truly a part of God, and not a part so much of Mary, except, and, he, and she, he was no part of Mary, that she functioned as a laboratory <clears throat> through her chemical processes, channeling the elements of the earth to the implanted supernatural cells or fetus. This son, <clears throat> now Mary had nothing to do with it, Brother Matt said, this son, is the pure, unhybridized Son of God, who can produce his own wife for himself, from himself, as did Adam. <clears throat> now back to Adam and Eve in the garden. In their spirit form, their spirit form light, Adam with Eve went in him, male and female, one spirit, they were commanded to bring forth life to populate the earth, which lives would have been spirit beings first, and then afterward clothed upon, even as they were, because that's what it have to be, that's how they came. <clears throat> That's how the animals came. That's how the plants came out of the ground. But they went the flesh way, and flesh begets flesh. Bible says. Then at that time, precisely at the fall, they were still able to bring forth as God said, so God took that power from them. <clears throat> at the time of the fall, they could still bring forth. Unless God stopped it. And he did. Because it went, as Brother Hall said, from the word to the blood. The bloodlines. Christ, the tree of life, had brought them forth in his image and had given them power to do the same, to bring forth in their likeness which was of God. And there came forth the light which spirit being. Then he clothed them. Now that was taken from them and they no longer <clears throat> had the word but the lie. And God in no wise would clothe their children by creative acts. The whole plan now fell into degradation of sin and death. And they themselves had forfeited immortality <clears throat> so immortality uh, without death, which that's what it is, for the seventh seal, that's the seventh seal in the garden. It was there. Right? Genesis to Revelation. Was removed to this time <clears throat> until death had run its course. And you can see a little bit of this in a picture by reading James 1, 13 to 15. <clears throat> Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted to God. Adam and Eve were too smart for that, but they tried to palm it off anyway. God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, <coughs> brings forth death. So you can see that's been going on down through the ages. <coughs> All right. As Brother Branham uh, speaks of man being restored to Eden, <clears throat> he projects the going back to Eden all the way to the New Testament, New Jerusalem. What we're looking at. The prophet constantly used the principle of projection, as I mentioned already today. <clears throat> and I saw that I think I brought it to your attention in Hebrews 11, 14 to 16, if I didn't read it. I think I read it. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a, a country, and truly if they'd been mindful of that country once they came up, they might have an opportunity to return. But now they desire a better country, that's in heavenly. Wherefore, God's not ashamed to be called their God, for he prepared them a city. Now that tells you what they were looking forward to. <clears throat> right back from the beginning of the scripture, there was a revelation of immortality 
in God's own kingdom restored upon earth, where nothing would ever defile. It would be purity and all of God. <clears throat> and the bride would be there ruling. And the princes of the earth and those and the foolish virgin and those perhaps that died without the gospel, those in the book of life but not the last book of life, <clears throat> could come and bring their glory into it. And it would cover the whole earth as the waters cover the sea, the glory of God doing that. <clears throat> so there we see a picture. Hold on, now we go back to reading. I want to bring out serpent seed to you here. Now remember, he is that tree of life, contrary to the serpent seed you see. He's that seed, the woman's seed, the tree of life in the garden. Now, unless they put forth their hands and move this tree, they'd eat that tree. Now I think Brother Brown was saying here, unless the cherubim <clears throat> were put forth, they would then try to get to that tree to get eternal life. And he's the only tree that can be taken that you can live forever. And I tells you right there, with the removal of that, if you cannot get to that, that specific tree that is dealing with the existence as we see it now, because that's where it was at that time. You understand what I said? I hope my language wasn't unclear to you. <clears throat> we're living human beings right now. Look at me, mortality. They were living human beings back there. And they were immortal as long as they had not believed the lie. <clears throat> see? And accessibility to him, evidently at that time, is what could have given them eternal life. So he stopped the accessibility to himself as the tree of life, immortality, specif specifically. <clears throat> he has to come forth the same one now, the same giver, in the form of a man, in order to die, to repudiate the power of sin, to bring remission and put man in the position of being able to get that light which he was denied. <clears throat> so he was that tree. He was there. See? He was the truth. He was the word. He was there. <clears throat> they were made in his image. He was there for that purpose. And he's the only one who could give it because he is the word of life. And that be the word, then, the word of God, which Eve turned down in the garden. <clears throat> he, she turned down that word in that hour. And that's what stopped immortality. That's why Brother Brandon said, this bride will not fall. And if you get a bride that cannot fall from a word, <clears throat> then she's got to come to a place of immortality. Because death must be swallowed up, which is like... <clears throat> A wild, like an animal catcher, catching a wild animal. <clears throat> he throws a net on him. So there's no way that death can get to you. At that time in the garden, God made it. There was no way to get to Christ, the tree of life for immortality. <clears throat> now there's a, a net made that death is caught in, in no wise can stop us from getting to immortality. Amen. There's your seventh seal. See, because that's what it's all about. Time's run out. What time? More time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Why, certainly that's right. There's no more children being born and raised, what have you. <clears throat> when you plant your tree and nobody eats it but you, but your offspring's there. As an Adam all died, even in Christ all made alive, he's not going to lose one of them. You're not going to get a legitimate child that God lost. <clears throat> There's no way when God loses his attributes, he closes his attributes and brings them for the purpose. His word is life which he turned out. Then here's Christ the Word made manifest right today and back on earth. And when he came on earth, he was the tree of life. Do you believe that? Sure, he was the tree of life. He's the same one that was there. What did Rome do? He had to be chopped down. Cursed everyone that hangeth upon a tree. <clears throat> that the blessing of God promised to Abraham might come on the Gentiles. And every one of us. He was put on a tree of disgrace, cursed as he then on a tree. Became a curse for the human race. And now through that, he brings forth a bride tree, which will be the tree of life, <clears throat> restored back to him as husband and wife in the Garden of Eden. So what is it now? <clears throat> You've got him. Now if he's the tree of life, he is going to then bring forth in his likeness, as it were, many trees. <clears throat> comprising a bride. And he's bringing her forth now. 
Oh, glory to God. By the same word and the same God made manifest as husband and wife. <clears throat> the same kingdom, the same garden, the same principle, the same everything, right back. But one little difference. Mortality has run out. Amen. Couldn't die if you wanted to. So I think I get so mad this morning, I just run through a brick wall. I mean, hit myself with a, you know, going through 600 miles an hour, 2,000 miles an hour, or 7,000 miles an hour, and just annihilate myself, go, go hit that brick wall, go right through the brick wall. You wouldn't want to do that anyway. I'm just telling you how this thing works. There's no such thing. <clears throat> There's no such thing as life death. Amen. Not, not, we're coming to the end time. <clears throat> as husband and wife, same bride tree, back again, notice, making it known. Making it known when? At the end time, when the light is shining, the harvest light that ripens the fruit <clears throat> at the top of the tree. And you don't get all dried out and messed up because it's a sweet, mellow light at the right time that <clears throat> ripens the tree and gets you ready for the kingdom. Amen. See? <clears throat> the bride tree's back again. And this again is Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. You've got two things in there. You've got the word of truth that the bride takes. You've got the lie that the devil's bunch take. <laughs> You've got the true Eve and the false Eve. You've got the true Christ and the Antichrist. You've got the tree of life. You've got the tree of knowledge, good and evil. You've got the same thing. You're right back at the beginning. <clears throat> you see? Now, my, there's so much here. We could just keep on going. Notice the tree of Christ, the body in the garden. Now, making his mystery known to this bride tree, redeemed by Christ, the second Adam, you, you know he was, going back home to Eden with his fallen wife redeemed, back home again. <clears throat> right. Going back to the original. No weeds, no briars, no thorns, no bugs, no germs, no mosquitoes. I hate mosquitoes. No germs, <clears throat> killed up to a thousand miles high. No problems. No sin, no sickness, no death. Coming on down with the king, rooting with a rod of iron, just wiping them all out. <clears throat> Satan being bound for a thousand years, put in the bottomless pit. The bride here <clears throat> with King David on the millennial throne <clears throat> and the temple. The whole thing, all of it. Completely right the way it's supposed to be. <clears throat> all right. Redeem. That's Christ in the church today. Taking his wife back. That's in Hosea. You can read from Hosea 2.14, where he takes back the woman. See the threefold mystery now. God manifested in Christ. Christ manifested in the church. Now you know that's speaking of the end time. Right there. <clears throat> the singular of John 14 and 12, not the plural of Mark 16. Always watch that all the way through here. If you don't understand that precept, you'll never get this message. <clears throat> you'll be straight back to Pentecost. Christ manifested in the church. All together to bring back the original Adam and Eve again. <clears throat> what original? Not Adam and Eve per se, but what they stood for. Amen. Be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth. Now the original command that was set aside... God takes up and brings to pass for them, fulfilling it, and the earth is replenished. See? <clears throat> okay. One man, one woman, which are one, made out of the same blood and the same spirit <clears throat> and the same everything else. And you see that, of course, in the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians. How long we got? Oh, it's all over. What time is it? What time is it? Oh, it's late. <clears throat> it's almost half past nine. Okay. We'll finish off and start on page 63 tomorrow morning without a recap. We'll just go straight in there. Barely a recap whatsoever <clears throat> because the service is, is late already. All right. Very good. The Lord bless you. Let's at this time then turn to the <clears throat> book of uh, 1 Corinthians and just read specifically from the uh, 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians. And in there, we'll read from uh, verse 23. For I have received the Lord, that which he also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night which was betrayed, took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. 
After the same manner also he took the uh, uh, took, after the same manner he took the cup, <clears throat> and when he had supped, saying, "This cup in, is the new testament, my blood. This do is oft you train your remembrance of me. For as oft you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come." <clears throat> Uh, wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be given to the blood and the body of the Lord. Let a man so examine himself and sweet of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eats and drinketh unworthy eats and drinks damnation or judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, many sleep. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. <clears throat> now in there you'll notice the words are very, very clear. It says, Off you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death till he come. Now there's two comings in there that you can be aware of. <clears throat> One is this coming, which is the appearing, and the other coming is one of the three times he comes immortal, which will be the second time coming immortal when we meet him in the air. And what I'm looking at is this, that when you eat and drink this, these emblems, <clears throat> you show forth his death till he come. But the appearing amongst us today uh, is greater in force with these emblems by not overlooking the blood but recognizing the fact that he in the form of the Holy Spirit has now appeared to the Gentiles proving that he has risen from the dead by doing the same things in the form of the Holy Spirit that he did when he was here in the flesh. <clears throat> so therefore what you're doing you're receiving the emblems in a much greater way strengthened and more firmly spiritual and beneficial by your understanding that this is truly <clears throat> a Melchizedek ordinance on the ground that is just about all over the heat of the battle is just about all over and at the time when Abraham was tired chasing the various brigands that had stolen from him and his nephew and all, <clears throat> and came back and there was Melchizedek, priest of the Most High God, who did not sacrifice to God, but offered the emblems of the sacrifice. You know? And Brother Branham mentioned that after the heat of the battle, <clears throat> where Abraham was able to sit down with him. And I believe tonight we have the same thing to us, given to us in that particular arena or that particular atmosphere, that it's all but over. That Christ has appeared to us, which is the sign of his literal coming. That's what Brother Brandon said. It is. <clears throat> and that means that we, knowing that he has risen from the dead and proven that he has risen from the dead, and that he is in our midst doing those things that he did before he died when he was here in the flesh and is now doing them. As it says in John 14 and 12. And this is the miracle ministry of Christ that vindicates Elijah. Proving the Son of Man here in his revelation. And how much more do we drink <clears throat> not to condemnation but to justification knowing not that we of ourselves are justified, but the justification that God wrought through Christ in his death and the reconciliation <clears throat> that followed puts us now in the position that we know that we know that nature is just around the corner from being transformed and we are just one step from the Eden that we've been talking about tonight. That's the truth. Because these things were not done in the corner. There's a vindication. See, I cannot ever believe that God is a liar like me. And he's a double-crosser like me. And he pulled a deal like I would pull a deal. I can't believe that God's integrity is so low that he would have a prophet on the scene that he would back up if it wasn't his prophet. Amen. If my sister could read Brother Branham's handwriting, not realizing it was Brother Brown's, I thought she did. And she just shook her head and did She said, this is the strangest man. There's not one bit of deceit in his handwriting. Well, there's not one bit of deceit of God's word 
the 10-4th, you better be that. Because his handwriting <coughs> was nothing, but we might say the interpretation of this handwriting for our day, which God gave for us. <coughs> so, we know then, for what God has done, by means of vindication in this hour, that the death of Christ was 100% efficacious. Amen. That it accomplished everything he said. <clears throat> now the Holy Spirit, which was released to baptize believers, that same one who gave of his spirit, according to the word of God, but the prophet taught us, he himself is here in this great day of the parallelism of his own scripture. I've come, he said, to destroy, and I would accept I have a blessing. Because all was come together. You Hallelujah. cannot ever find it ever apart. There could be a curse first, then a blessing, or there could be a blessing and then a curse. But it's usually the blessing and then the curse. And he's come with his blessing to show us <clears throat> that this is that hour to enter in with the Lord. In fact, he says, Brother Brandon categorically states that the separation of the two people, as it says, one working in a field, two in a field, one taken, one left, and one in a bed, one taken, one left, two in a bed, one taken, one left, two grinding, one taken, one left. In Matthew 24 is the separation by the word ministry of this hour, but over in 17 of Luke, it is the carrying up in the rapture. <clears throat> Shall not the God, the judge of all this earth, be right? Amen. So will the righteous judge uh, destroy the righteous with the wicked? If there be ten, why, he said, I wouldn't destroy it for one. Why, he said, I'm going to get them all out of here. Amen. Then falls the judgment of God. <clears throat> that's what God has ordained. And you know, brother, sister, that's exactly what we are doing tonight in the partaking of these emblems. So if the brethren would come forward at this time, <coughs> and as we used to take care of the service. And uh, we're going to start again as a Lloyd. We start at the back row. And they come down one row at a time. Come right down here, take me in, and go all the way to the back. And go around the back and sit in your seats. That's the kind of thought it's like. And when that's finished, this one does start at the back again, big apart. Always start at the back. Okay, very good. Shall we all stand at this time then? <clears throat> and shall we bow our heads in prayer? Gracious eternal Father, again we praise and thank you for love, mercy, and grace. And the goodness it is, Lord, you bestowed upon us so we can come together to come, come into your word and see what happened back in Eden 6,000 years ago. Lo and behold, the seventh seal is open. The door of immortality is here. For Lord, thou hast come down with the shield.